Hey, it's the, hey, it's not off. It's April sixth. I'm in Costa Rica. Just spent a day fishing. Actually, watched my son and daughter. My son, my daughter caught this giant sailfish. My son caught a sailfish and two tuna fish. Uh, is that not a bloody sport catching tuna fish or what? It's April seventh. It's the forty sixth episode of Risk On. And there's always risk. We were on a boat today out about 30 miles off the coast of Costa Rica, not available. And POWW went to 777 or 773. Regardless, that's about, those of you who watch the show know we've got 800,000 shares. That's about a $400,000 difference by the time I got back. But still a big winner, Jason. How are you doing in Vegas? Doing great. I was... um... Doing my best. Uh, in fact, I was trying to send text, SOS, signal, anything I could to get a hold of you. Um, <laughs> I was just uh, when it when it went above 750, I was texting back and forth with uh, with Skyla. I got Roland's number. I said, "Wow, look at this thing going nuts. The volume's coming in." I said, "Could it possibly be that some news was leaked?" But it wasn't the case. It was just a strong buying day for POW. Wow, no leaked news, huh? Nothing that I see at all. No. Got it. I mean, we could find out something different tomorrow, but um, yeah, maybe that maybe that gunbroker.com news is coming. Anyway, it looked really good. Um, they were talking about the uh, Biden talking tomorrow about some possible executive orders with gun control. The only thing I found that he could possibly take executive action on was uh, ghost guns, which doesn't really do anything. It's ghost guns are basically guns that are not fully finished. They're often assembled via parts in a custom fashion. He could announce that the people that want to buy parts to assemble guns could re require background checks. Eh, you know, that's basically all I see is what he's going to approach. He's more concerned with the infrastructure bill. Jason, the question is, have you ever been deep sea fishing? I have not been deep sea fishing. Well, I'll tell you, catching a sailfish and releasing them is fine. Catching tuna fish and gaffing them. Oh. And, br and bringing these big, like, these tuna fish are hard fishes. They're like a solid piece of muscle. That's a, an amazing thing. How about, how about you, Josh? Ever been deep sea fishing? I haven't. No. Well, I, I recommend it to everybody. It was really a good time. <laughs> Every single, uh, my, 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 da my daughter and my son were here, my two youngest, the twins, uh, my sister-in-law, my wife, all of us caught a, a sailfish, which is like a, like a kind of like a marlin, but not a marlin. So and you don't eat you don't eat sailfish; you throw them back. What kind of weight are we talking? Um, I think they're probably between fifty and hundred pounds. Wow! And what about for maybe? The I mean, the one that my daughter caught was over six feet long, or maybe five and a half. It was huge. What about and the, the tuna? Yeah. The, the tuna my son caught it had to be 50 pounds. Man. So, amazing. Of course, I'm telling a big fish story. It could be smaller, but right? I mean, the fish, was this, the fish was this big. It was over here. Can you see how big it was? Anyways, that's my big fish story. Jason, let's cover the markets real quick. We got about two minutes left to cover what happened in the markets. It looks like we had a record close today. It was actually kind of a boring day. There was not much going on. The Dow was only up 16 points, 33, 446. The Nasdaq was down 9, 13,688. S&P 4,079. That looks like a new record. Uh, Bitcoin, well, go ahead. Like I say, it looks like Bitcoin pulled back to me. Yeah, 56.4 at this time. And Ethereum's right at 2,000. Oil was 59.70, down th uh, up 37 cents. Gold seventeen thirty seven down six. Silver twenty five nineteen down four cents. Copper four dollars six cents down five cents. Not much going on there. Um, what do you want to talk about first? I mean, we covered pow. Well, we, we got we got hit a little bit for ten percent in Clean Spark. That was down, and then Mosey was down. Um, QS QuantumScape was down, but for the most part, it seems like a relatively flat day. The big winner for us continues to be POWW, continues to be a strong, strong. I mean, this stock looks great after doing that big offering. Well, how many how many weeks ago was that big offering? It was probably, let's see, 
Yeah, I would say two, two and a half weeks. Yeah, oh, I think it had to be longer than that, but whatever. I, I, the stock obviously hit a high of seven seventy three, yeah, and a low of six fifty five. So it's uh, it's looking great. Its market cap is five hundred ninety five million, and uh, we are still long a ton of it. How, what do you think of the volume today? It looks like the volume um, was a little bit above normal. I don't know. What do you think? Big volume, over two x volume. Yeah, okay. buyers came in today. It was big. Uh, yeah, two not, extra, yeah, two extra volume for sure. Yep, so that was good. Over two, two point two five, two hundred twenty five percent volume. Uh, you also we want to mention another trade that we made uh, late into the evening um, or um, in the early morning. Uh, Nick, SOS on my screen here. This one. Yeah, right. let me let me let me cover something for the audience, and that is. Obviously, I run the portfolio and Jason's an analyst there and he comes up with names and SOS is definitely a Jason name. Um, we put on 50,000 after the pricing. If you guys recall, we they did a pricing at five bucks. I think they, how much did they raise, Jason? Do you remember? It's over 100 million, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it's 125 million, I believe. Right. I, and then we yeah. did a we did we did a pricing. Uh, we looked at it and they were trading below the offering. And I think we bought it at four. 83 added a little bit on the way down and then last night jason calls me uh after the market and says it's ripping jason why don't you cover why it was ripping there was uh some talk a lot of chatter and all the discord channels wall street bets apparently there was a lot of uh people that were looking at the short interest determining that it was an underpriced um stock and that with the short interest and the amount of short percentage into the stock that they could possibly squeeze this stock and that's exactly what happened massive volume came in and the price actually moved tremendously after hours it was up 40 percent after hours right so, and, and jason as you as you know um what did i do i uh, took it off oh yeah so. for sure yeah. yeah, I think we, we sold we, we we sold that position up a little bit more than sixty two thousand dollars. Jason, where did it close today? It closed at five seventy eight. It's five fifty eight in the after hours. Um, it actually was pretty high pre market, like six fifty ish. I do recall seeing. Um, so yeah, we we six forty nine. We did pretty well with this trade. I like I liked it. Yeah, it, you know, I looked at that. Fifty thousand dollar gift yesterday, and I uh, started selling it above six. Yep, and the volume enabled you to get fully escape that with a nice profit. That was uh, well done. So, what do you think of the sell off, continual sell off? Is your argument with GameStop that it's holding up, or that it closed near the low of the day? Which one is it? You know, I didn't even look at GameStop today. I was. Let's take a look at it. Actually, let me pull that up. I didn't even take for, for, for full disclosure. Of course, we've been talking about on the show. We are short the options. We wrote some um, uncovered calls and got some premium for those game stoppers. Here we go. We got the yeah, one. We have the. Yeah, we, we have the we have the two fifteen calls that expire um, on the sixteenth. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, the AT, I, my take on this is the ATM is fully running. The, the, the dollars are being harvest, harvested by the uh, executives at GameStop, and we could figure this out, obviously. I could figure out when the ATM is going to end. I mean, it should end in – let's see. What was the volume? Assuming, assuming, assuming they're selling. You know, if you looked at it – Yeah, they're selling. They, they've limited themselves to 3.5 million shares – and that would not get them based on the ATM. It would not get them to a billion dollars that they wanted to raise. Yeah, that's the key verbiage up to. I mean, we'll see what happens. 4.76 million volume today, similar to yesterday. Uh, yeah, so doing the math. Well, look, we can figure out what they raised. If they're if they're raising capital, it's, it's not that hard. Right. Hey, what's uh, what's your take on today in the market? What, what stocks are you? Were you interested in what do you want to cover today? Uh, well, we've got a few other tickers here that aren't the average run of the mill tickers. GameStop, in my opinion, has raised $150 million right now, just if you guys are interested. That's just strictly my opinion. It's no fact base, it's just using an estimate based on my opinion. So don't take that as. It's a good, solid guess. Yeah. Uh, uh, 
I want to look at U Time. You ever heard of it? No, never heard of it. Well, I wish I heard of it yesterday. U T M E. It went public yesterday. Four dollars. <laughs> it went public at four dollars yesterday. IPO. It's eighty. So before you say before you say anything, yeah. What are the chances that this is a Chinese stock? It is. Okay. <laughs> Good guess, sir. It was halted at least twice today. Uh, U time is an IPO yesterday for well, initial public offering was four dollars. It didn't. It didn't open there. They design, develop, uh, produce, sell mobile phones. Uh, yeah, China-based mobile phone company. Seven million shares. Yeah, this thing went absolutely ballistic today. And here we are at eighty-two at closing, seventy-two after hours. Crazy. Really. Yeah. Happy. Um. I, you know, this is a good time to remind the audience that we're not recommend, making a recommendation here. We tell you what we're trading, what we're looking at. We are not long this stock. Maybe Jason is in his own portfolio. Um, a stock that's up 2,175% in two days from the IPO. Right. Uh, uh, so did they cure cancer, Jason? No, I'm actually trying to figure out what in the world went on here. The company sold 3.75 million shares in the IPO to raise 15 million, but get this, with the stock now trading nearly 23 times the IPO price, the company's current market value is uh 752 million. Right. That's just So you're you're just this is the entertainment part of our show. Yeah, this is definitely the entertainment part. But had I yeah. known about this and we caught a little piece of it, then it would have been a risk on move for us. But it wasn't. It's just for entertainment. There is 8.27 million shares outstanding. And at the present price is just under a $700 million market cap. Yeah. Um, do you remember a few years ago, there was a, a pretty high flying stock. Um, it, it, it got, it, it was a, it was a lender. It was a big crypto lender. It got crushed the same way. LMFA. LMFA. Yeah. 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 Went sick, went public at six and uh you know crazy yeah i remember that one so, so we got um, someone in this super chat talking about uh how do you pronounce this name something holdings i don't know h h y l n let's take a look do you see it skyla H Y L N. Oh yeah, I f I'm familiar with that. I didn't really take a D. I just saw it moving up the leaderboard. Uh, Ace, what's the ticker again? H Y L N. Oh, I yeah. Let's take a look at that. Somebody wants to ask about it. Let's take a look. And they 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 pr they're presenting on April seventh today. Um, it's uh, down thirty. 30% year to date. Uh, Hyper Truck Innovation Council to advance. Okay, it looks like uh, commercial vehicles, commercial EV vehicles. Am I, is that what we're getting at here? Yeah, it looks like that's what it is. And apparently they're doing a presentation. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. I know this deal. Hold you, on a you second. You do? Here. Okay. Yeah, this is the former, uh, I think, Turquoise Acquisition Corp. It provided electri electrified powertrain solutions. For commercial vehicles, the company focused on reducing carbon and intensity greenhouse emission gases by providing electrification powertrains to class eight commercial vehicles. The company offers solutions to, in its battery systems, controlled software. Um, this was a high flyer at one point, too. Yeah, it looks like 170 million shares outstanding, 92 million flow, 1.85 billion market cap. Uh, we got nine eighty nine to fifty eight dollar fifty two week range here. Didn't didn't they do something? Didn't they do something very similar to Nikola? Was this a spac? It was a spac. I just said to you, it, yeah. it merged with it merged with Tick Turquoise Acquisition okay. Corp. Um, we'll look into this name, Jason. Will you keep a an eye on that? Write that down. Yeah, I got it right here. I'll take a look at it. We'll get more uh, more intel on it. H Y L N. I know there's a big holder of it. I think Thomas Healy owns 22 or 23% of it. 
And uh, I've seen this name talked about before. It was a Nicola name at one point. Yeah. Okay. It's, um, hey, hey, thanks for the super chat, guys. And asking about HY Ellen, we'll definitely take a look at it. Um, I recall that this um, was a pretty high flying, not out of control flying, but pretty high flying um, SPAC at one point. I wonder when they de spacked. We have to find that out. Yeah, it looks like Healy's still there, by the way, CEO. Oh, is, is Healy the CEO of the company? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, I understand that he had a pretty big position. Was he the original founder? Yeah, he was the original founder. Yep. Right. Absolutely. We okay. should take a look at that. What, are, what other tickers do you have on your uh, on I'll, your radar today? Hey, I wanted to look at one that was kind of interesting. Um, ticker is AVCT, American Virtual Cloud Technologies. And I What's want you to... Again? Uh, American. Say that, say, that a, say that a little slower. I'm sorry. It's American Virtual Cloud Technologies. The ticker is A, V is in Victor, C is in Charlie, T is in Tom. And um, what's interesting about this is the company actually got an offer to to buy after hours for nine dollars a share, unsolicited. And what's interesting about this is it's. Let me read a little bit to you about what this company does, and then you'll realize why I was interested in it. American Virtual Cloud Technologies is an integrated information technology solutions and managed service provider. The company specializes in delivering solutions in data center transformation, enterprise networking, cloud services, cybersecurity, managed IT services. The company serves industries such as technology, finance, media, and entertainment. So... I just thought that this was kind of interesting, and it's actually uh, closed today at five dollars and eighty-one cents, and in the after hours, it's at eight dollars and thirty-nine cents. After it uh, did receive the uh, unsolicited nine-dollar share takeover bid. Hmm. Yeah. So are they are they similar to SSNT? I would say yes. I would say hey, can they. You can you see what kind of annual sales they have? I can look it up. Uh, they currently have uh, 19.7 mil- million shares outstanding, 3.6 million float, 114 million market cap. Let's see what I got here for sales. Uh, let's see. Income statement, revenue, 7.61 million in total revenue for fiscal year 2020 and see what else I can find here. Yeah, they right. got an unsol- American virtual cloud technologies reports. They received an unsolicited non-binding bid for nine bucks a share. Yeah. So, yes. Yeah, That's an interesting scenario. That's an interesting scenario because if this has seven or eight million in sales, that's over 12 times sales if they got offered at nine bucks, if we're correct, right? Yeah, I think that was net revenue, though, $7.5 million. So well, Total revenue? Total revenue, you mean? Uh, let me see. Oh, yeah, you're right. It's 7.61 total revenue, fiscal year 2020. Absolutely. Right. So if you look at SSNT, I think it has revenues of close to $45 million plus. Whoa, whoa, wait a minute here. No, I told you wrong. No, Todd, total revenue income statement, fiscal year 2020, 87.61 million. Sorry, I missed an eight there. I need my eyes checked. Yeah, clearly. Yeah, so huge difference. Mm. Anyway, I was just looking at that cloud services, data center. Uh, you know, a lot of different names came to mind that were similar to that. Yeah, I could see that. You got to be tired after that fishing expedition. Oh, my God. I'm flying back home tomorrow. I'll be back in the office on Friday. It uh, the all day fishing thing. I know it sounds funny, like for me, but got yeah. up at the crack of dawn, and uh, it's very tiring. <laughs> we uh, we got about six minutes left here in this segment. Uh, I wanted to talk a little bit about Uber, U B E R. In fact. They are doing their own little stimulus plan to try it. As some people know, they might not know, 
Uber and Lyft have been having trouble getting drivers to go on the road because of the uh, unemployment uh, from the federal government and the state government. A lot of times that the unemployment exceeds what they make, so they're just staying home. So it looks like the CEO announced a $250 million driver stimulus package amid the post-COVID uh, driver shortage. The $250 million... What are they, what is, what are they going to do? It looks like they're going to use it for sign-on bonuses. Uh, they gave several examples where they would receive uh, bonuses in some of these key markets like Austin, Texas, Phoenix, Miami, a lot of these markets where they're short drivers. They're going to be giving them um, bonuses based on a uh, number of trips, initial sign-on bonuses, and um, I guess it's going to just be like an overall stimulus for the existing drivers too, to encourage them to work even to work more hours because a lot of the drivers, they aren't they are either not driving at all or they're just driving under the hours where they can still get their unemployment and not exceed the uh, earnings that will disallow them from getting the unemployment. Got so it. Thought that was pretty interesting. Uber, just to give you an idea, year to date, uh, it's up eleven point. Two four percent, fifty six eighty nine. So I just thought that was kind of interesting. Wanted to bring that to your attention, the folks watching their attention. Uh, another that thing, stock is, that stock is Uber's still Uber Uber's doing doing pretty well though. Yeah, overall. Still, I mean, the stock has been relatively performing in what was you know obviously a post COVID environment, pretty tough market for them. Yeah. I mean, all time Uber's up thirty seven percent. Um, when did it go public? Like maybe two or three years ago? Yeah, I don't remember the IPO. Uh, it wasn't two or three years ago, but I don't remember the um, the, the IPO price, but it would, it's been uh, doing relatively well. Let's cover NAK here. Are you still, uh, I mean, it's only one day later since we told people we were buying it. What are you thinking? Northern Dynasty Minerals. What are we at? Low 60s probably? 62 Golden and Silver. a half. Yeah. Nothing's changed. We're just waiting on the EPA and the Army Corps of Engineers uh, today. When do, you, when, do you, when, do you, when do you expect to hear from from them? What, what's the time frame? Uh, this month. Today was light, light volume, 8.74 million. Average three-month daily volume, 40 million. Um, a lot of people just are not selling. They're waiting for the news. Uh, I don't think there's a whole lot of shorts here at this price point. Um, there used to be a lot of shorts into this when it was up around two, two dollars and fifty cents. So yeah, this is a boomer bust pick. We've decided to take risk on, and if we're right about this, we'll look like heroes. It'll the stock. I mean, there's nine hundred billion worth of uh, minerals in the ground, so it's going to be a huge boom if we are right and the appeal is won, or if the government from Alaska decides to sue the federal government in order to get the the minerals out of the ground. So we'll see what happens. We're just going to wait until the EPA makes their decision, the Army Corps of Engineers. And uh, if we're wrong, probably go down to $0.30. Cents. This could actually go to zero. Oh, we, we went from uh, – yesterday the risk was $0.30. Cents. Now you're changing your risk estimates to zero? It possibly could go to zero, sure. Wow. Yeah, just full disclosure. Well, we, we bought more of it today at $0.63, cents, so – Actually, while I'm watching, uh, we're watching baseball here, and baseball is going to zero right now. The Seattle Mariners decided that they were going to score seven runs in the sixth inning, and uh, <laughs> looks like we're going to zero on that one. Um, I guess I guess we had the other team. Yeah, we got the White Sox, and uh, maybe the pitcher was just out hammered last night, drunk, and he just came in and decided to uh, throw some meatballs. Anyway, it's only the sixth inning. We got time left. Um, as far as tickers go, that's really about all I had. I had Riot lined up here. It looks like Riot has made is getting ready to make a hundred and thirty eight million dollar acquisition in mining hardware with ship shipments are all scheduled all the way through October twenty twenty two. Now I wonder why anybody else can't get miners. There's forty two thousand units from Bitmain, the S nineteen Js, they are uh 100 terahash, 90 terahash. Um, yeah, that's pretty interesting, huh? Yeah, that name is pulled back pretty hard. It's in 49.10 today. And I've been noticing Bitcoin soft, but do you think it's just kind of coiling up and consolidating? 
Do you have anything to add about Bitcoin and Riot at all? Yeah, I've noticed that it's a lot of the Bitcoin tickers uh, were actually off today because Bitcoin went to 56. Clean Spark went down into the low low 20s. Uh, Riot actually high 40s. What did uh, just curious? What did Mara do? Let's take a look here. Yeah, Mara's off 12 percent. Yeah, it was pretty much in line. Everything was down. Yep. It was kind of a negative Bitcoin day. Riot, I see it down 9.24% um, in the aftermarket, I mean, in, in the full market. Right. Got pretty hit. What was the, sto- what was the story with QuantumScape? For full disclosure, we're long QuantumScape. We are not long Riot. We are not long Mara. We are not long anything but Clean Spark. We sold our SOS yesterday at over $6. But what's the story with. Um, with QuantumScape that you saw today? Nothing really. There was a couple of uh, articles saying that QuantumScape was overvalued even after like Volkswagen gave them the extra $100 million tranche. Uh, $47.39 after hours. It's down to $46.92. I'd actually looked for a good entry or a good add-on around $47, so nothing's changed. In fact, there was... Um, now, this is something I saw online. It's it could be true. It might not be true. But it appears that some possible inf- information leaked from Biden's infrastructure plan that would call for $100 billion for new customer or I'm sorry, new consumer electric vehicle rebates directly to the consumers, $100 billion. So that's pretty interesting. That ties into QuantumScape, obviously. QuantumScape's, right. QuantumScape's looking to uh, provide uh, solid state lithium batteries that are um, have more range, uh, more efficient, quicker charge times, stuff of that nature, uh, versus the liquid lithium battery. So that's what they're working on. Volkswagen believes in them. Hey, hey we're in segment number three now, and I want to remind everyone, we'll be on KEIB 1150 AM, Los Angeles and Orange County this Sunday at 1 PM. We're also on the iHeartRadio app on the Patriot Network at the same time. So if you have the iHeartRadio app, you can pick us up any kind you don't have to delay you can listen to us all over the world if you want to hear our friday broadcast don't forget about youtube by the way we do have a, a wrap-up show where we take the best of all day all five days tyler one of our editors does a great job of preparing that and that show is uh seems to be uh they're the most popular show we have yeah it's getting a lot of views we really appreciate that <clears throat> I know they do a what, great what's job. Se- what's, what's segment number three? I, I apologize. I ran right off the boat. I got into a golf cart. They drove me right here. So unfortunately, I, I didn't see Josh's publishing of the segments for today. Uh, well, one more thing before we go into three. I just want to real quick. Coinbase came out and, and reported $1.8 billion in total uh, quarter one 2021 revenue. So I just wanted to mention that their IPO is coming up this month. Um, as far as the next segment, we were going to get into a little bit of uh, economic news, a little bit of geopolitical news, and uh, a little bit of stats regarding the economy. That's basically what we were going to cover. Also, I want to touch Got on uh, Tiger Woods. There's an accident investigation for him. We'll get into that afterwards. But the first thing I, I do want to I do want to I do want to <clears throat> cover and thank Base Flyer, B A S E Flyer. Uh, for doing that $5 super chat and asking the question. And Jason and I will follow up tomorrow on HYLN. And when we get a super chat, we put it on our radar. I actually put it on my stocks to follow. That way, if I have any commentary, I'll follow up with you on that. So you can expect us to follow HYLN for you. And we'll give you our commentary if we see something. Appreciate you guys in the chat. And uh, we'll be returning to normal next week. Skyla... The young Skyla, the young Skywalker, I'm sorry, the Padawan learner. I'm just kidding around, by the way. She will be joining us on uh, Monday the 12th and be on the show. Hey, Jason, any update on the studio? You know, I didn't go in the studio. Um, I'm, I'm being told that it's about two two weeks out. Is that right? Okay, they're hanging the wall tomorrow. And I think we're about two weeks away from uh, occupying the new studio. Seems like a, a standard answer we hear kind of all the time, right? Everything's about two weeks. Someone told me that the average human being 
can handle 10 days. So when you tell someone something and you want to give them hope, even though if it's going to be two and a half weeks, you always say, we're looking at about 10 days. Yeah. And people can accept 10 days. Beyond 10 days, they kind of get into a little bit of a funk. Um, but what, hey, what can, what can you do about it, right? What about when, like, Wimpy said he would pay the kindly pay Tuesday for a hamburger today? How many days do you think that was? My problem is, is I'm a <laughs> cheeseburger guy, so I'm not going to get a hamburger and pay on Tuesday. I'd rather pay on Monday and get a cheeseburger. But I know that's not very funny, but I don't like hamburgers. Anyways, what's, on, what's up in politics, Jason? Hey, so the infrastructure bill, um, Biden said he's willing to negotiate uh, on the corporate tax rate. As far as the increase, uh, the 28 percent proposal uh, met a lot of um, it looks like Manchin and Kristen Cinema and some of the other moderate Dem Democrats kind of uh, were concerned about the 28 percent proposed corporate tax rate, thought it was too high. And so Biden was said he was open to negotiation on that, which is interesting. Um, there's also some things going on with. A lot of people putting, wanting to put pork into the bill. Uh, I noticed some stuff on Twitter. You can look for yourselves, uh, where people were trying to tie things to the bill that had nothing to do with infrastructure. And I noticed some rebuttals from like Senator Ted Cruz and a couple of people from the other side that were just uh, kind of making fun of what they were asking, which was pretty crazy. They wanted to tie like all kinds of social health programs, uh, like daycare. Uh, child care, like all this stuff into infrastructure. So I don't know. It was kind of a battle back and forth on Twitter. Once in a while I get on Twitter. I think it's a cesspool, but sometimes I see some stuff on there. Uh, that's just my personal opinion. Uh, I don't have a Twitter account. I don't really have any social media accounts. So anyway, that's what's going on with infrastructure. It looks like if they want the deal done, they're going to have to actually negotiate, um, at least within the Democratic Party, because they can do a 50, 51 majority vote on infrastructure because Chuck Schumer was able to get the parliamentary exception so they can do reconciliation. So they were not going to require the 60 vote that was status quo, but they still have Democrats that they have to sell the program on. So that's where we're at with infrastructure. Got it. Interesting. Yeah. Any other political any other political news report you want to cover before, before we move on? I just wanted to I, – um, again, the – there's kind of a thing going on uh, near Taiwan in the Strait of uh, Taiwan Strait with our air with our, air, our USS John McCain sailing through there. Apparently, uh, China sent 15 warplanes through there as well. So it's kind of a cat and mouse game. I don't really like to see that. Uh, we were used to not having wars for the last four years, and uh, I really don't want to go to war with China. So uh, that kind of concerned me a little bit. That was on the uh, American. That was actually the source was the AmericanMilitaryNews.com. If you want to check that out, AmericanMilitaryNews.com. So there's problems there. I mean, there have been problems there forever, have there not? Yeah, well, for the last four years, there weren't, as, there weren't a lot of things that were going on as far as escalation. There's always been problems there with uh, Hong Kong, Taiwan, freedom, you know, people that don't really accept communism. They want more of a democracy. So, you know, there's always going to be a battle there. But I just, the escalation is a problem, in my opinion. Got it. Um, Got it. You, well, I can, officially, I can officially say I'm looking forward to getting back to Las Vegas and uh, getting off this uh, quasi-vacation I have. I've been here about a week as of tomorrow, and I'm headed back. But I love Costa Rica. Um, but I, I want, I want to end the segment when you're ready. I want to talk about, um, trading platforms and, uh, when you're ready though, if you have anything else you want to cover on the political side, uh, I'd, I'd love to talk about trading platforms. Not really. A couple other things I want to touch on, uh, purchase, uh, home mortgage applications for the week ending April 2nd. We're down 5% week over week, uh, crude oil inventory, crude barrels were in demand, uh, over 3.5 million more barrels than the week before. Um, however, gasoline, there was a 4 million barrel surplus versus the week before. I think that's interesting information. You can find that information on econoday.com. 
uh, where it'll set you up with the weekly reports. You'll know that what's coming out so you can cater those reports to your trading strategies. For example, tomorrow, every Thursday, 8.30 a.m. Eastern Time, you can look at the jobless claim numbers. That usually has a little bit of impact on the overall markets. So just um, keep that in mind. There's always uh, macroeconomic uh, reports and uh, numbers in play. So I just wanted to bring that up. Got it. I'm going to step off because I'm going to lose a charge here. I'll be back in the next segment in about less than a minute. Okay. Yeah. I'm going to step off Jason real quickly. Uh, Jason, next up, I'd really like to ask the question about what trading platforms everyone's are using. Uh, you know, we're having our own issues with some of these trading platforms and I want to hear about some of the new ones that are out there. I'll be right back. Jason also too. Um, we got the status of the update of the winners um, for our bracket contest for Gonzaga. I didn't even see us discuss the fact that Gonzaga got whipped. Yeah, Baylor put it to him. Uh, actually, we spoke about that today. Josh has the winner. It was uh, the winner actually swept. He won the uh, the Sweet Sixteen in the Final Four in the championship. Also, yeah, Josh will cover that. Um, actually, I don't know if he's on now, but. We do. We I'll do. I'll be right back. Okay. I'll be right back. Josh, right. if you're on, you can you can announce the winner if you want. Yeah, we um, we had Jeff Bombchill, who is a regular in the chats, join in, and um, he made his votes on the bracket, and he was the winner. So really excited to get back with him and uh, get him his his winning. That sounds good. Um, I'll let you handle that. As far as the Final, as far as the final game went, my goodness, Baylor was shooting lights out. I mean, I watched that game, and they just they didn't miss from three-point land, and their defense was really, really aggressive. And um, the pace of play was really fast. I just don't think Gonzaga matched their athleticism very well. They got beat on the boards. Um, Gonzaga never really faced a team like that all year, in my opinion. So, yeah, congratulations to the Baylor Bears, their first national championship for the program. And, uh, you know, Gonzaga's there, it seems like, every year now. Coach Mark Few does a great job. What was once considered a mid-major program um, is now basically a national powerhouse. And once was considered uh, Mark Few would look for a bigger, brighter job at a, you know, a bigger um, conference. I don't think he's going anywhere. He's built a monster program there. So um, you can look for them to compete for the national championship every year. So good run for Gonzaga. Congratulations to them as well. Is that actually true that Baylor's never won? Yeah. Wow. Not that you'd make it up or anything. That's not what I was inferring, but I was like, I didn't know that. For basketball, that's <laughs> that's correct. What did you make of them whipping them, though? I didn't bet the game, but I had a feeling that they would probably have an athletic advantage. And when you make the number of three-pointers that they made – it's really hard to overcome that if you're the other team and you're getting beat on the on the boards also. Uh, they, they controlled the game from start to finish. Hey, I'd like to ask the audience, if, if you don't mind, what platforms they're using to trade. And if anyone's using Charles Schwab or some of the other platforms like Webull, if you could give us your commentary on how you feel about them, how you use them, and why you're using them. Um, I'd love to hear about it in the chats. Or you can reach out to me directly, DM me on Instagram. It's Todd Alt on Instagram, T-U-D-A-U-L-T. Um, obviously, Jason and I manage what we consider to be a lot of money. And we're looking for different platforms out there that possibly offer services like more expanded hours of trading. Um, we currently use E-Trade, which only opens at uh, 7 a.m. Eastern um, versus IB, Interactive Brokers. And none of them seem to have all the, the best features. We're also looking through some algorithmic trading. So those of you out there that are using a platform that has algorithms, we'd love to kind of chat about that and see what happens. Jason, uh, if we could make sure that Josh and I follow up with this, I'd love to examine some of the platforms. Maybe we could rate them ourselves. Yeah, that'd be great. Um, I know personally I use Webull and I use TD. Um, you know, TD is the same trading hours as E-Trade. Webull has the full range of hours, kind of like Interactive Broker. Webull also has crypto trading. Webull has pretty easy-to-use option trading as well. Not as easy as Robinhood, but, you know, Webull is a, is a good uh, overall option, and I think, you know, a lot of people are moving to that. 
But T- TV of Air Trade a lot, has uh, on Thinkorswim uh, futures trading, e mini contracts, and stuff like that. Yep. And that's something that I, I would like to explore in terms of what uh, our audience thinks is the best out there. Yeah, we'll get some feedback in the chat and uh, we'll have Skyla gather up that intel and then we'll uh, go from there. Before we transition for tomorrow about stocks, is there anything on the radar for tomorrow you want to talk about before we transition to risk on gaming? Um, not really. I want to see what happens to Bitcoin overnight. Um, you know, if it tests 55, will it hold 55? I'm looking for the gun the gun ticker names tomorrow, possibly. Let's see what happens there. Uh, obviously, POWW, but as far as other tickers, look at like uh, VSTO I want to watch um, and RGR, some of the large cap SWBI, um, just to see what the reaction is after uh, the President Biden comes out with his executive action. Um, yeah. One of my one of my one of my thirteen D names pulled back today. SSNT that was down. I did see that. Um, there was a couple of other ones that were that fared pretty well though. Is it? Is it? And this is what I was talking about. This seems to be a little bit of a lull, and, and the market continues to kind of creep up. But my concern is that it's going to creep down in May. That it's really kind of a false positive right now. I mean, I don't know how you feel about it, but I'm still there. I still think it's a blah market. What's your thoughts? It is. But yeah, usually it does creep up in May. Uh, one thing to consider with the extension of the tax filing to, I guess, May 17th. That's an extra 30 days for people to digest that and um, write their checks if they have to, unless you're a quarterly filer, obviously. But yeah, that's just something a little bit different. You think them holding on their money a little longer is propping up the market? Seems hard to believe. No, not at all. Um, hmm. But it's just something a little bit different. I mean, with retail traders, you usually, I mean, retail traders are usually going to file right away. They want to get their return. Um, generally speaking, I think most retail traders would be earning a um, a refund depending on their withholdings. But I don't know. It's it's kind of interesting with the infrastructure bill in limbo. Um, you've got the possibility of increased corporate taxes, uh, how that all be digested. Will they pass an infrastructure bill? Will it be smaller than what he wants? What will the corporate tax rate be? You know, all of that stuff is in limbo right now. So that that does have an effect on the market. So right now, what's your favorite stock, Jason? I know this is an entertainment show and we're not giving advice, but if you're putting money to work, what's your favorite stock right now? You're on the spot, by the way. Oh, if I wanted to put, well, it just depends on the risk. Um, I mean, high risk would be NAK, yeah. NAK for high, like ultimate sure. risk. Um, moderate risk for like a long swing trade would be like AUMN, Golden Minerals. Um, a solid like blue chip right now. Hmm. That's a good question. Maybe like General Motors, kind of like General Motors. So I like, and for full disclosure, I'm long about a million dollars worth of Icon Enterprises, IEP, massive dividend. Jason, could you look up IEP's dividend while while I'm talking about it? Uh, Pretty big dividend. They just announced they're going to have a new CEO coming over from GE General Electric. Carl Icon hired him. I think the CEO and CFO did not make the move to Miami like Carl did when he moved his company from New York to Miami. And um, I'm a big fan of Brett Icon, his son that's working there now. And back in the game with his dad, he's a very smart kid. Well, he's not a kid anymore. He's a very smart man. He's 40 years old. I think he's the future of the company. And I like that stock a lot. I like Icon Enterprises. I like that dividend, that fat dividend that pays out to Carl Icon. And you can participate. Jason, what's that dividend right now? Hey, did you buy before uh, March 26? It's a 14% dividend. Um, It looks like it's a $2 dividend. Yeah. Big dividend. Yeah, big dividend. The ex dividend date was March twenty fifth. Are we going to get it this this next quarter or no? I think we're after that, right? No, no, we bought it before then. I've oh, been we did it all month. Yeah. Oh, sweet, two dollars a share. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Yeah, that's right. aw- that's really good. Awesome. Yeah, I'm a big fan of the of the company and that big dividend. Hey, check out though. Talk to your tax advisor. It is an MLP. It's publicly traded, um, so you got to be careful there and make sure you understand you're going to be getting a K one. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Hey, Jason, we're, la- we're in our last segment here. And last night I got the privilege of 
texting you all night when we talked about the White Sox and and some of the bets you're making. Could you talk about how it's possible to be lose your total games but still be a winner in baseball? I noticed that you are up big in baseball, but you told me your percentage would be around 58. You're pretty much right there. But yet you're up big on your bankroll. Can you talk about how that's working? Well, here's the thing with baseball versus all the other sports. Um, it's a money line bet. I don't know if people, how far advanced people are on, that are listening to the show. But let me give you just a little brief summary. So like with football or basketball or something like that, you're going to usually bet uh, $110 to win $100. It's just a 10% um, VIG, they call it, or the house percentage or the house profits. So that's generally what's going to happen. So when you bet like the Pittsburgh Steelers and they're giving seven points to the uh, Las Vegas Raiders, for example, you'll bet $110 to win $100, but the Steelers have to win by at least seven and a half points in order to cover that spread. Well, in baseball, it's totally different. Baseball, the the actual sports uh, books give you a money line bet. So matter of fact... I'm glad you brought this up because this is pretty this is pretty good information. All right. Give me one second, Nick. Okay, let's go to MLB. One second. We're almost there. Let me make it easy here. Okay. Nick, pull this screen up real quick. I'm going to give you guys an example. Okay. What you're looking at here is a pricing engine on SBR. It's actually SBRodds.com. What this is is it's a um, it's a live pricing engine, and this specific pricing engine caters more to the offshore sports books, those that are located hey in Costa Rica, Todd, uh, Panama, some other places. But if you look at for tomorrow, for example, the Chicago Cubs are, t- are going up against the Pittsburgh Pirates, and the opening line is Jake Arrieta and the Cubs are favored minus one forty two. So what that means is you would have to bet $142 to win $100. Now, if we take uh, Tim Anderson um, and the Pittsburgh Pirates, we could bet $100, and if the Pirates pull it out, we win $132. That's what's known as a money line. And how you make um, – one way you can approach baseball is you can look for underdogs. In baseball, the teams are very even – and what happens is, you know, if a team wins 100 games in a year out of 162, that's a phenomenal season. Uh, you know, it's only a 6-2-5 winning percentage. But what the thing is with baseball is it comes down to pitching, bullpens, and timely hitting. And when you look at a game like this Pittsburgh Pirates and Chicago Cubs, you know, we have to look at the value of this pitcher. Is he worth this value, this underdog? So you have to go and you look through these. Uh, you can take that off now, Brett. So you have to look at these money lines and use your analysis, your analytics, all of your resources online to determine how many times out of 100 will the Pittsburgh Pirates likely beat the Chicago Cubs. And then you have to cross-reference that to the money line and see if that makes sense based on your analytics, your abilities, all the resources and knowledge that you've gained. So baseball is a very um, – it's very in-depth as far as the analysis goes. You can't just throw a dart and hey say, hey, you know, the Yankees are going to win because what, what happens is the sports books will handicap you with a powerful team like the Yankees. They might have their best pitcher going like last night, Garrett Cole, and they might charge you 300 to win 100. So if you bet that way every single time, you there's it's virtually impossible to be profitable because if you bet $300 to win $100, if their opponent only beats them, you know, if they beat them one time, the next bet you have, you're going to lose money. So to take these favorites, and a lot of these uh, sports consultants, they like to provide these favorites because they look, you know, they look like a lock win. But it's risk management. You don't really want to bet, you know, three or $400 to win $100. You're looking to find value in the underdogs, kind of like the stock market. You're looking to find undervalued assets in the stock market. Something like a POW, something you know, like a AUMN, where there's some information that you, people don't really know about. It's not baked into the price yet. So, yeah, that's the assessment with baseball. It, it, we could talk a lot about this. Um, 
And as I am watching baseball now, the Dodgers just lost to the Oakland A's in extra innings. The Dodgers were a 150 favorite. If you bet 150, you win 100. So if you bet the Oakland A's today, you actually made really good money. Um, so baseball is hey, a hey, – Hey, programming note for tomorrow, Jason. We're going to be launching uh, the show tomorrow at 2 o'clock. As I'm flying back from Costa Rica, we're going to launch at 2 o'clock tomorrow. Programming today was 3.30. And on Friday, we're going to resume our normal hours. As I'll be back in Vegas in the studio with Jason. And come Monday, we're going to be starting right there at 1.05 every day with Skyla now on the radio with us and on the show on Risk On. So we're pretty excited about it. We'll be talking about ETFs next week. That'll be an important factor to talk about. We'll be looking at rebalancing some of our own portfolio and l- new names we're talking about. We're going to cover the Coinbase IPO, which is exciting. Mm-hmm. Jason, what do you got on the on the, on for tomorrow, Friday? Anything you want to talk about w- before we get into the last five minutes? Uh, real quick, keeping in line with uh, Risk on Sports, our year to date is 17 wins, 14 losses. Uh, those are on the straight bets. On the parlay bets where you would bet two or more teams – and you would get odds, which what that means is you would get a um, you would get a multiplier based on the bets. If you win all the bets, you would be paid a uh, greater odds. We're actually four wins, seven losses on that. That's kind of hard to win those parlays, but they can be a bankroll booster. We'll get into more of that when we have the show starting April twelfth. But we're plus one thousand sixty three on the year. It's six days old. We started with twelve hundred dollars, so our return is uh, you know around ninety percent. As far as tomorrow, I'm just going to be looking at the crypto stuff. I'm going to be looking at the uh, the, the self defense tickers and uh, a couple of biotechs. Uh, but that, yeah, that's what I got going Jason, on. Jason, what I love about what you're doing with Risk on Sports, you started started with that $1,200 bankroll, kind of proving to people how you can grind out a return in six days. Yeah, and on the parlays, we actually have more losses than wins, but we made more money. Correct. And on the regular straight bets, we have more wins than losses. I, I'm really loving this a lot. I'm going to learn a lot from you on it. I uh, I find it fascinating how some of those parlays pay off. I can see why people kind of have a side hustle doing this. It's going to be a, a good time. I, thanks a lot, Jason, by the way, for the video with Steve Stevens covering a, um, yeah. your buddy Vegas Dave. Wow. Um, I, I didn't know you could do that on YouTube. That was, um, yeah, and, and get monetized. Yeah, I, I didn't know it was possible to use those kind of words and still be on YouTube. I think uh, Steve Stevens actually. Uh, <laughs> Got him. Yeah, Vegas Dave was torched on that one. Yeah, I uh, once again didn't know you could use those kind of words on YouTube. So anybody that wants to uh, look at that video, you can search uh, VIP Sports Steve Stevens. He uh, talks about the industry. He talks about consultants who claim to do certain things, but they don't document it. Risk on Sports will have full audit. Uh, we'll have all of our picks documented. You'll be able to see every pick, which is a lot different. There'll be full transparency here. Yeah, one of the things we're doing different is we are having full transparency. Every ticket will be audited every single month. You'll be able to see those tickets published and know exactly what we're doing. There's no hiding anything here. You'll be able to see the wins the good, the bad, the ugly, the whole thing. Hey, we're coming up on two minutes, Josh. Anything we need to cover before we wrap up today? Nope. Not from my end. Okay, everyone, we appreciate your time. Don't forget about tomorrow, 2 o'clock, I'll be flying back to uh, from Costa Rica to America. My whole family, America, my whole family took a COVID test yesterday. Oh. That was fun. I, I enjoyed that uh delightful poke up the nose and uh they still do it the old manual way here everyone was covid free so we're headed back to california or california and then nevada um on friday the show will resume normally and uh we appreciate everyone watching jason what do we got to cover in this last minute my friend um not a whole lot actually we're actually gonna end the show 30 seconds early i don't really have anything else early yeah uh, it's never early, never early. Don't forget to watch us this uh, this Sunday. Watch us. I mean, listen to us on uh, the iHeartRadio app, the Patriot Network, 1 p.m. Pacific time. We're going to be looking for that gunbroker.com. Hopefully the POWW announces that they've acquired the company. They're teasing us here. 
maybe, Jason, you thought today was going to be the day, huh? I don't know. It, it wasn't today. They might halt the stock if they do it. I'm gonna, just being honest. Got it. Yeah. So. All right, everybody. Listen, it was uh, it was it was fun doing this from Costa Rica. I'm not as excited about it as I thought I would be. I thought it would be easier. It's not easier. Uh, these foreign countries do not have the same internet access and capabilities. Uh, some of them probably do. Um, I actually had a great time here in Los Sueños. I recommend it to everyone. I recommend for sure deep sea fishing. That was amazing watching my daughter Asia catch the biggest selfish. And uh, you guys take care. Enzo caught the giant tuna. We're going to have tuna tonight for dinner. Nice. Everyone take care. For risk on for Jason and the team. We'll see you tomorrow, guys. Thank you so much. Two o'clock tomorrow.